How much do you know about the five big ideas in teaching for mastery? Fluency is one of the five big ideas, but what does it mean for us in the classroom? We chatted to Dr. Debbie Morgan, NCETM's Director for Primary, to find out her top tips for teachers. Fluency in- includes, it's not restricted to, but it does include recall of key facts, and they're really important. The automaticity in number bonds within the 10 times table facts, and an understanding of the relationships between those facts. Also, procedural fluency is important. That is being confident and accurate with using procedures such as a column method for multiplication and then using multiplication and division facts to find, for example, two thirds of 24 is really important. There is also associated with procedural fluency, the ability to choose an appropriate method. Some methods are more appropriate to some calculations than others. For example, if I was calculating 101 subtract 99, it's easier to think of that as finding the difference between 101 and 99, which is, of course, 2. Whereas for 101 minus 2, it's easier to think of that as 2 less than 101. 101 take away 2. So that decision making is really important in fluency. There's also flexibility involved, the flexibility to move between different contexts and make connections between them. For example, the concept of one quarter that could refer to a part of an area of a shape. It could refer to part of a journey, part of a a measurement of time or part of a set of objects. So that same concept of one quarter can be looked at in lots of different contexts and the ability to move between those contexts and see it as the same concept is also part of fluency. Why is fluency in maths so important? Knowing key facts to automaticity enables pupils to calculate more efficiently even when those facts aren't within um, the times tables that we learn or the number bonds to 10. For example, 14 multiplied by 5 could be solved by adding the partial products. So I know 10 fives and I know 4 fives and I add them together. Or it could be looked at by halving um, one of the factors and doubling the others to transform it into an equivalent calculation of 7 multiplied by 10. Also, it enables pupils to solve problems more easily. Being able to scale up or down ingredients, for example, in a recipe by using known multiplication facts and applying them to other numbers. Fluency also frees pupils' minds to think more deeply about concepts. Fluency isn't isn't in opposition to deep understanding and focus um, of concepts. So, for example, If I already know um, double facts and understand the relationship between doubling and halving, when I'm introduced to the concept of equivalent fractions for the first time, pupils have the opportunity to spot relationships more easily and it will make more sense to them that six twelfths is equal to one half. There is that multiplicative relationship uh, that they will be able to draw upon. How should teachers incorporate fluency into their maths lessons? Teachers need to be aware that developing fluency, it involves time and effort. It doesn't come quick, but the effort is worth the rewards. Finding those little pockets of time, even when you're just lining up for assembly, you can throw out a few key facts. For example, the, a call and response activity is nice. You could say seven is made of five and, and the children respond two. And then you all say together, five and two make seven. So just those little oral rehearsals, providing opportunities for retrieval. You can do one in less than 30 seconds. When planning for any lesson, teachers should consider what fluency is needed and choose the numbers that they're going to use in their lesson 
appropriately. Don't introduce a new concept with numbers that children are not confident in calculating with. Choose the ones that they are confident in calculating then because they already know that and then you can focus on the concept. So try to give examples that build on pupils' fluency that they have already developed. Teachers will experience that some children find learning facts harder than others. And sometimes it becomes a barrier for those children. They feel they can't learn those facts, that they're not capable of it. Well, they are capable of it, but they may need the confidence building. They may need extra practice or teaching. They may need a slowing down to just focus on one fact at a time and then build and add it to their bank and retrieve facts. A little pack of cards to go home to get extra practice with can not only help them learn facts, but it can build their confidence. And that's really important. So they remove that barrier and that anxiety that they don't know um, those facts. And just to sum up, ensure there's a systematic whole school fluency program in which each teacher knows their responsibilities, such as the Mastery Number program, and realise that it's not enough just to have a program, but actually teachers might need professional development, they might need support, they might need help in where they're going to fit it in to their daily routines. Thanks, Debbie, for all that useful information. If you want to learn more about fluency, read the full Q&A with Debbie in our feature. For more information about Teaching for Mastery and the Five Big Ideas or the Mastering Number programme, visit our website.